there's a lot of bullshit gone around about this plant. I'm well aware that certain people have said that, you know, they can sell this plant for like $10,000 a leaf. It's bullshit. Testing, testing. One, two, three. <sighs> Hello, everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen, and welcome to a completely different kind of video. I've got to admit, this was a little bit weird for me, because as you may see in front of you, there is a studio microphone. I've owned this microphone for some time. I think I bought this in about 2017. Fun fact about me that you might not have known, I used to do a gaming channel a long time ago on YouTube, so I just happened to have a lot of this shit lying around. So I thought I would make some use of it today for something completely different. So, I thought it would be a cool idea to rank some popular, popular, rare plants that people talk about or anything that's been particularly prominent at any point in time, right? So, you may be able to see in front of me, we have a bit of a, a grid, shall we say. There are some plants along the bottom that we are going to rank and we are going to rank them into one of the following categories. Why? Because it makes sense. Trust me. It doesn't make sense at all. So, starting from the bottom to the top, we have For the Drone. I needn't explain this. Fans of the channel will know exactly what this is for. This is the shittest tier of the plant categories. Definitely, 100%. If plants end up in here, it's not good. The section above that is Let's Test Shipping Delays, which, again, if you watch the channel, you'll know. If you don't, basically, I famously used a certain philodendron a while ago to put in a box to test a shipping delay to different countries around the European Union. And essentially, it didn't matter if the plant died or not. So it's kind of cannon fodder. That would be the best way to describe it. This is my version of cannon fodder. Can you see how this video might go? I feel like I'm going to offend a lot of people today. Anyway, we have the... I guess kind of middle of the road, and that is yes, boy, it's good. It's a good, it's solid choice, it's a pass. We then have iconic because it's very good. It might be a classic, it's popular, it's it's good to take care of, and everything else. And then at the top, which I'm not actually sure how many plants are gonna make it in here, we have sexually attracted. There's not a lot to say about that. I'll I'll let you kind of fill that one in yourself. So why not just get into it? Now, I don't know what order I should do this in. I don't know if I should just pick from the bottom at random, to be honest. Should we just see how it goes? Okay, so I'm going to kick this off with the Philodendron Florida Ghost. I'm just going to pop it into the middle while I kind of talk about it and then tell you where I think it would go. So, Philodendron Florida Ghost. See, now I would... I kind of want to put that in iconic because I feel like it, it kind of is. Like, it really held its own for a long time. I do think it's easy care. Not that necessarily I'm going to rank everything in this list as to whether it's easy or not. This is kind of just a list to see if I kind of like it, probably more than anything. But I do think this is quite iconic. Plus, the plant gives you a lot back. You know, it goes from white to green and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think it's solid. I would say it was solid. But because I love it that much, I'm going to go with iconic because it is one of my favorite plants. If it wasn't, it would probably go in yeah, boy. Next up, hmm, what shall we pick? What shall we pick? What shall we pick? Let's go with the very wholesome. Right, okay, so I love this plant, don't get me wrong. It, it is fantastic and it looks very pretty. It's velvety, it's hard shaped, it's fuzzy, it's got fuzzy stems, it's everything you'd really want. But it's a bit of a bitch. And I haven't really sold it in the shop for quite a long time because it honestly it is a bit of a bitch. It's terrible for pest control. I've mentioned this so many times, it's not even funny. <laughs> it's a bit of a spider mite magnet, but it is sexy. So I don't know whether to rank these on purely based on whether I like them or I should bring in some care into this. You know, I'm kind of, I'm literally toying between this one and this one. Uh, I'm going to keep it in yes boy for now because I do think it's a good solid option, but it's not so bad that I would want to stick it in a box to test shipping delays. I don't think we hate it that much. Like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it there, I think. Okay, the variegated Adansonia. This this is really tough. This is so tough for me. I like the plant, but I don't love it. I don't really care about its existence. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't think I ever really have. Not really. It's not been one of my favorites. They've gone down in value a lot. They don't carry variegation very well. There is a notorious problem with getting like half moons and then they kind of just fade to green and then it's just kind of shit. I think if we took value aside, because obviously we wouldn't test shipping delays on something that had high value, that's kind of besides the point. So we'll take value out of this a little bit. I'm going to leave it in Yes Boy because I do think it's solid. It's nice and variegated, but if there was a category in between Yes Boy and shipping delays, I, I would be sliding in there. But I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt because... 
variegation, I guess, I suppose, who doesn't love it? So it's going to get the benefit of the doubt. But seriously, I don't really give too much of a shit about this plant. I'm not really going to lie. Sorry. Oh, oh, here we go. So this here is the Philodendron Birkin. And let, can I just say something? I have absolutely zero idea why everyone loved this plant. I have no idea from whence it came. I just, I never understood the hype. I thought they were ugly from the get-go. I've never liked them. There was a point when they came out where people were paying like stupidly high value for these things. And then about three months later, they were obviously in TC and people didn't really know. And I think the value dropped right down. And then it went from people paying to like treble figures, low treble figures for these plants, right down to, oh gosh, it was like mid to, to low doubles. It was like nothing at all. So say it went from like $150 right down to like $30. It was really, really bad. I don't know if that was just in the EU, but it, it suffered a lot. And I know a lot of people lost money on these, honestly, due to the fact that I've literally never liked them anyway. I'm 100% going to put them in for the drone. If I was being optimistic, I'd put them in the category above, but I literally literally cannot stand the sight of these things. I think they're absolutely disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This video is about my opinion though. And I think they're absolutely disgusting. So they're going in there. So there's our first for the drone category. May it not necessarily be the last. Right. Okay. Next plant. I'm going to do this one here. I'm going to do the Aglaonema Pictum Tricolor. So, ah, God. People might get surprised at this, okay? So I do actually like this plant. I've, I've spoken very highly about this plant a lot. It doesn't grow amazingly. It likes very high humidity and not quite as much light as what you'd think. But it, it has that horrible um, growth pattern that a lot of people don't actually know exists. Basically, you end up with, if you imagine a typical like coconut palm tree, you get a long stem and then you just get leaves at the top most of the time, the way most of us grow this plant, right? So you don't get a nice, big, bushy, leafy, luscious plant. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying typically it isn't done. And as a result, I think you can get a plant that looks quite ugly. Now, I know the camouflage is great. Honestly, I'm here for it. It's great. But I don't know how to feel about this. I really don't. Do I leave it in Yes Boy? I think because of the camouflage leaves, I'm going to leave it in Yes Boy. But I nearly put it in a category below because it's probably my bias, guys, but I'm kind of sick of looking at them. I don't know how many I've got left in my shop. I think I might have two or three, but I've kind of stopped stocking them because I just got sick of them. They don't ship very well. They ship like shit, by the way, like real shit. Let's keep it in Yes Boy, but I'm being slightly on the optimistic side. I think ideally I should have had a category in between these two because a lot of these plants would be slipping into that category. Okay, we're going to go for this one. This is the Philodendron UPI. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you know the history about this plant. It's a very, very quick rundown of the history. Um, essentially, this was discovered by a gentleman named Yup Moonen. I can't remember the year. I'm really sorry. I don't know what year it was. But essentially, he found this plant here. And due to the way that the leaf presented itself, i.e., I don't know if you can see here very well, they had these really short lobes on the top, virtually just a stem, and then it kind of extrudes and then becomes a little bit bulbous on the tip, right? Now, the way this looked, the guy that discovered it, Yoop, he thought that the plant had actually been eaten alive by insects when he found it. So this was like a major, major discovery, but it was also pretty funny at the time. So I kind of like the history on that and I think it's cool. Personally for me, it's got to be iconic. I'm not sexually attracted to it. That's that's reserved. You know what I mean? I can't just hold myself out all the time. But this is absolutely iconic. I think it's got great history. I think it looks unlike any other philodendron, really. I don't think many come close. I can only think of one. And you know what I think about that plant. That's the philodendron 69686, if you wondered. But it's got to be iconic, guys. It's got to be. I don't think there's any other place on here it can go. The Monstera Oblique. Right. So, hmm... This is this plant's gone through a lot, has it not? I think when I first did my video on this, this was 2018? Was it 2018? And honestly, they weren't around. Now, I get a lot of comments on that video that I did about Oblika, basically saying, you know, you're full of shit. Um, this plant isn't rare. And I don't know why people don't look at upload dates. But at the time that I put that video out, as you guys may know, if you followed me since way back then, you'll know that the things I said in the video did ring true. It, it was that rare. There wasn't many people that had it, yada, yada, yada. Now, of course, it's still got a price tag on it, but it's kind of everywhere. I haven't lost my love for it. And this is really 
difficult for me because I would actually dance between these two categories. Now, obviously my shop logo is based on this plant. I have told the story of this plant before and the shop logo. I'll not do it again. But for that reason, this plant does hold a special place in my heart. But I'm not sexually attracted to it. So for me... I think it's another iconic. I think that's probably where it should go. You can't really put it less than that unless you don't like the plant, in my opinion. So I think that is where it should go. I think that's quite fair. After that, what have we got? I don't know what to pick from. Ugh. Philodendron Gigas. Okay, so this plant's quite sexy, right? And I don't know if you know anything about this plant, but if you don't, the leaf shape is very similar to an Anthurium forgetii. Um, if you haven't seen that, it's essentially like a reverse and upside down teardrop shape. But this plant loses that when it gets mature. It becomes, I think it becomes more of a heart shape, just with less pronounced like ears on the top, I think. This plant, honestly though, when it ships, it, it essentially ships like shit and it's caused me nothing but problems. I bought a lot of these in in my time and every single time I bought them in, I've had to keep them for honestly at least six months, minimum six months. So it's not really something I enjoy. Enjoy. And I do have some at the shop and I've had them for a long time and I haven't done anything with them. So I actually think, although they are nice, they are not the nicest. I think Melanochrysum is nicer. So I'm actually going to drop this into let's test shipping delays, which I know might be harsh, but if you look at the plants down on this bottom section, we're going to have to be a little bit harsh here. So who better to be harsh than me, right? Variegated Philodendron bilati, specifically variegated. So most people know my struggles with this. I used to have one way back in the day. I think it was very early 2019 or mid 2019. Basically, I had a plant. I absolutely adored it. I actually needed to sell it to get funds for my shop basically, to plumb back into the business. So I sold it in order to get an investment, basically. Um, I think I sold it for £600 for a full plant with maybe six leaves. Yikes! That's that's really shit because I think now a leaf, just literally one leaf of this plant is worth four figures, I think. Needless to say, I shouldn't have got rid of that. I also miss it as well because it was a really nice variegated specimen. But I don't know if it's iconic. I almost want to leave it where it is because there's a lot more variegated things that grab me. Now, it might be because I don't see these things in person a lot. I'm not saying they're super rare. They're just so expensive. I think it prices a lot of people out of wanting this plant. They don't propagate amazingly either. There's a bit of a struggle there. So I think that's why I don't see them very much. So maybe if I did see it more, I might like it more. But I think for now, I'm still going to leave it in Yes Boy. Even though it's a variegated billetite, I think that we could possibly do better. I think. Hate saying that, but... I, yeah, it's, it's a lovely plant, don't get me wrong, and I would love to have one again. I think, I don't know, something just tells me that's where it should be. Okay, let's do Anthurium crystallinum. Now, this is actually one of my favorite Anthurium. Anthurium, generally, people tend not to go for, and I don't know if that's because there's like a steep learning curve or whatever. I've never really fully understood the reasons why people don't go for them. I don't know if it's because they're hard to look after or they tend to be a little bit more expensive. Crystallinum, let me tell you, it's very affordable right now. Certainly in the UK and the EU, the market is very flooded with them. So if you want one of these, you can pick one up for like high doubles, no problem, high double digits, so less than a hundred, you know, euros, pounds, whatever, no problem. So for that reason, and because I like them and because I think they're not too difficult for an Anthurium, they are one of the easy ones, I'm probably going to put it in Iconic, even though, I mean, it's quite funny, even though that's in Iconic and that isn't, I, I don't think I care. I think I love Crystallinum. And I think everyone should try one if you want to get into Anthurium and you want to practice looking after something that isn't super easy, that is a velvet type. I think you should go for Crystallinum. I think they're absolutely brilliant, to be honest. So I'm going to leave that there. And I, th I feel like that's the right place. What I will do is I think at the end, I will give it one last once over and make sure everything's in the right place, because I feel like sometimes it takes putting something in a category to make you realize whether something is in the right or the wrong place. So I'll do that. But for now, I'm going to leave it in Iconic because I, for me personally, I think it is. For everyone else, no, maybe not necessarily. So we will leave it there, I think. I'm going to go for Philodendron Linamii. Now, if you don't know what this plant is, it is a heart-shaped philodendron. It is a crawler. And the special thing about this plant is when the new leaves come in, they basically, they begin like a hot pink, like the color of this here. Literally, that's quite a good color match. And then they fade down to green. And they are very, very beautiful plants. I might keep it where it is, you know? And... These plants, don't get me wrong, they have a huge price tag on them, and they are unique, but they're not as good as 
some of the other plants like in this selection today that quite honestly are cheaper. They're pretty, but it doesn't last. But a Florida Ghost, I think, is prettier, even though it doesn't last. Therefore, I can't really put it in Iconic. Do you do you agree with my thought process right now? Therefore, I can't put it in Iconic. So I think I'm going to leave it in Yes Boy, even though it's like, it's not fooling around. That doesn't mean to say I've got to like it that much. And I do like it, but it's it's kind of mid-road for me. But it is really nice plant and I do recommend them. They're very easy care. I just think there's so many other plants on this list that are flashier. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So shall we pick something a little bit more controversial? I'm going to go with this bad boy. Right. This plant here is <laughs> variegated Raphidophora tetrasperma. And the last time, I'm going to be brutally honest with you, the last time I gave my thoughts on this plant, I feel like I censored myself a little bit. We're not going to do that today. So basically, I do not understand the hype on this plant. I will stop by saying that. And I know I said that in a video. I did a video on like 10 overhyped houseplants and this was on it. So I don't understand it for a few reasons. One, I don't think it's as nice as variegated Monstera. I just don't. I think that Raphidophora don't ship very well anyway, so they don't ship as good. They're less hardy. They don't look as nice to me, but that's not the main issue I have with this plant. This plant, as we know from having Raphidophora tetrasperma in regular plant shops, the green form, the non-variegated form, we've had that for some time, right? Under a few names, Raphidophora tetrasperma, a mini Monstera, Monstera minima. It's all the same shit, I assure you. It's the same plant. Now, the issue I have is the price tag that this variegated stuff is going for. And this isn't a price shaming thing. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is I don't understand why prices for this plant are this high when this plant is in tissue culture and you will find variegates. They will pop up because it's tissue culture, and as soon as you introduce tissue culture to any plant, your chance of variegates go up astronomically because it is tissue culture, because plants are being produced en masse, because similar mother plants are being used, the waters get muddied, mutations are more likely to occur. It is the nature of tissue culture. It's why we get variegated anything. It's why sometimes in big box stores, you can find a variegated Monstera or something like that that isn't sold as a variegated Monstera, right? So my issue with these bad boys is simply, people are paying way too fucking much for this plant, given it's in TC. And I'm telling you now, more and more of this is coming out. And and I think since I did that video, a lot more has come out. And I still think they cost a lot of money, but they shouldn't be costing this much. There's a lot of bullshit gone around about this plant. I'm well aware that certain people have said that, you know, they can sell this plant for like $10,000 a leaf. It's bullshit. There are people out there that claim this plant is worth a shit ton more than what it is. And honestly, I can tell you straight away that's just to keep the value up. It's to keep the perceived rarity and the status of this plant up, probably because the people are saying this obviously the people that own the plant. So for me, this is very artificially inflated. It is not worth the price paid for it when you compare it to a variegated Monstera that still have high price tags. So for me, honestly, based off all of that, I'm going to shove it in. I don't, it's one of these two. I'm trying to think of the other plants I would put in here and I'm thinking, you know what? Because people have done this plant so wrong, I'm putting it in here. Literally watch, watch people swarm this video now. Just with shit, with shit. Remember guys, it is my opinion and I'm the one with the microphone, so. I had to say it. Somebody had to say it. It's bullshit. It's artificially inflated. People lie about it. People use it as a status symbol. And I know people think that because of the kind of channel that I run, that I'm into that. I'm not into that. And if you've watched me for a long time, you'll know I'm not into that. Um, I don't like what it represents. I really don't. It represents hype. Um, artificial hype about something that it, it needn't be. So for that reason, I'm putting it in for the drone. I think it needs taken down a few pegs. I'm just going to say it, really. Right. So what should we do? Let's do this one. This here, if you can see it, this is Philodendron Gigantium Variegata. And it, it's a nice plant, right? 
And I own one of these. I own, well, obviously I have some in the shop, of course, but not counting that, I actually own quite a large one. It's, it's probably about as tall as me and I'm five foot four tall. It's quite big. It's not overly variegated, but it, it's nice, boy. It is nice. I like that plant, but there's a lot I don't like about it. So the ratio, the best way I can describe this, the ratio of leaf to petiole, so leaf to stem, is not a good one. You get quite a, a long petiole in relation to a leaf that should really be bigger than what it is. And even higher light levels don't necessarily help that. It is just kind of how the plant grows. So for that reason, I'm kind of not obsessed about it at all. It's not a yes boy for me. I, I don't actually care how variegated it is, by the way. That really doesn't matter to me. Not even 1%. I don't care. I'm going to put it in here because honestly, they're a bitch to grow. And if you don't give them enough light, they'll grow even worse for you than what they do with light. They don't look very attractive. I do think they've got a high price tag. I'm not sure why. I'm sure these are in TC. I mean, God forbid, so many of these plants are in TC, right? Ghost is in TC. Um, Billetai themselves are in TC. I know. Uh, I don't think anyone cares about Gigas. This is in TC. That's in TC. That's in TC. There's a lot of TC plants. Obviously, there'll be more on this, this, you know, drop down down below as well. But I just don't like it enough. It's work for me in the shop. I think they look nice sometimes, but not all the time. I like mine, but it's, it's absolutely huge, guys. And no one's going to grow one that big unless you're growing it in like Florida. So for that reason, is going in here. We're going to test some shipping delays with it. Theoretically. <laughs> what shall we go with? Let's go with this bad boy. This here is the Philodendron Caramel Marble. If you don't know what it is and you happen to know what a Philodendron Ring of Fire is, it's very similar. I think the leaf blades, so the leaves are wider and they're a little bit more of like a sawtooth shape and the variegation you can get on it, which you can kind of see in this picture here, it's between like caramel and cream and, and all that good stuff. It's quite a pretty plant, don't get me wrong. So that's obviously why they call it Caramel Marble. It's a nice plant. I don't think I can say it is iconic. My reasons, again, are going to be total bullshit to a lot of you, and I get that. But this is how I would rank them. So remember that. So fun fact, not long after I met Ben, Ben was actually selling these plants and he couldn't sell them because nobody wanted them. And I mean, like, he couldn't sell them for £20, so like $30. He couldn't even get rid of them. And it wasn't until after we came back from Thailand, was it last year now? that we found out that they were worth like, I don't, I don't even know how this happened, but they were worth like 2000 plus. It was insane. And previous to that, no one gave a shit. Now I like that because a lot of people that previously gave this plant love, now it, the, you know, those people are kind of sat on a gold mine. If, if you want to think of it that way, I get that like not everything is about that, but you know, you're asking my opinion. So that's really awesome for them. And I think that's cool because it was a plant that has kind of rewarded them from like their love of that plant. Does that make any sense? So from that aspect, it's quite cool. And I get that. For me, knowing what I know, I'm going to keep it where it is because I do like the plant and I would like to own one. Um, I have a friend that has one and I think she told me uh, at some point that I would get first dibs if she did cuttings. Um, so I do like them and I do want one. So if you see me own one, awesome. I don't necessarily agree with the current price tag. I think that's insane, but I don't know if it's coming down. I don't even know what the current price is on these things. I suspect it's similar to what it was because there really aren't many of these around. It's certainly not iconic. I know too much. I've seen too much shit, but I do like it and I would like to have it. Ah, oh, let's, let's get this one out of the way. Uh, this is the Philodendron Pink Congo and this plant, I needn't really go into it too much. I feel like most of us know this. This plant was a very famous scam brought about in 2019, I do believe. I think they started making their way onto the scene very early 2019. And then I found out about the plant's true origin, i.e. it's fake, around about mid-2019. And I made a YouTube video about it. And I'm not the only one that raised awareness, of course, but awareness, awareness was raised and people stopped buying it. And the value tanked from around about $200 a plant to about $20 a plant. So that was awesome. So quick background, essentially these pink leaves here are chemically induced. So over time they will fade to green and you won't get to keep any pink anymore. So the plant is essentially a green plant that's been chemically treated to change color. But once the chemical supply within the plant uh, wears off, 
then you have a green plant. So it's not worth anything really. It's worth what you would pay for a novelty plant or bouquet from a florist, I guess, for a special occasion. It's not worth any more than that. So for that reason, it can only go in one position. It's for the drone. Um, I think I chucked mine out eventually. It reverted. And honestly, I threw it in the bin. I don't even want that shit in my house. So I threw that in the bin. So if it's good enough for the bin, it's good enough for the drone. You feel me? 100%. Ooh. We're going to have to do this. I'm, I've been looking at this the whole time. We're going to have to do this. So this, you're looking at this picture here. This is my plant. This is variegated gloriosum. And I bought this plant, full disclosure. I think I bought this in, it must have been 2019 for $1,400. Um, won it at an auction, actually. I've loved it ever since, but I, it's not here with me in the UK. It actually lives with Enid from NSC Tropicals over in Miami. So you will see this picture and many others on her Instagram. Um, if you want to follow her, go check it out. It, honestly, it's, it's a fucking beautiful plant, guys. Um, but it can only be in one position for me and it's got to be here. And that is because I will get onto it in a moment because I have Gloriosum in this list. One of my favorite philodendron, if not my favorite philodendron actually would be philodendron Gloriosum. So the fact that I own a variegated one, which is super, super, super rare. It's probably the rarest plant I've owned actually. Um, it has to go there. There is no other position for this plant. This is like taking my holy grail philodendron and then making it variegated. I'm not usually one for variegated stuff, but I think the Gloriosum just looks so gorgeous. So for me, I am I am not ashamed. I am very sexually attracted to this plant. And as henceforth, it shall reside in this category. So I guess it's only right really to do the Gloriosum afterwards. Obviously, this is the non-variegated version. I I think when I started getting into my philodendron, not long after I did my first philodendron rare plant index. So as soon as I learned about all the funky heart-shaped leaves, way before I had my shop, way before any of that, a Gloriosum was definitely something on my wish list. I thought about it all the time. It was really hard to get it though. I eventually got my hands on one. And as it happens, I think if I had to kind of count up how many I own or how many are at the shop, honestly, a few hundred. Seriously, I, I have so many. I really should probably stop selling them. Um, I, I should do that. Let's, let's do that at some point. But I'm absolutely obsessed with this plant. It has to go here for me. It's only not sexually attracted because the variegated one is in there. Um, it, it can't go anywhere else other than iconic for me. It's an all-rounder in the sense that it grows really nice. It's tolerant of underwatering. It's easy to propagate. It ships absolutely fantastically. Wonderful, wonderful plant. If you're in doubt about whether you should get one, this is your invitation to get one because they're absolutely iconic. Right, we, oh, we're whittling it down now, I tell you. Okay, let's do this one. This is the Philodendron White Wizard. I was going to do the White Knight, but, you know, they're kind of the same. So the White Wizard and the White Knight are in an almost similar category for me. I do prefer the White Wizard. If you want to know the difference between the two plants, the White Wizard has a green stem. The White Knight has a pinkish rhubarbish kind of stem. Um, this is my favorite. Now, I like this plant a lot, but I don't like the way that it grows. I find this plant hard to get good looking, and it's a real shame. The variegation on a white wizard is like paper white, and you don't always get that. You get that on variegated Monstera. I think you get it on like Syngonium Albo, but you don't get it on everything with white variegation. And if you own a white wizard, you will know what I'm talking about. The white on that plant is like it's like Daz White. It's wonderful. So I do like it. It's not iconic for me. I don't know if I'm annoyed about it to say, let's test shipping delays. I've still got some actually in the shop. They're just tiny. Honestly, they're tiny and they don't grow. So I'm going to keep it where it is. I know what they can be. They just tend not to be. But I do think it's a solid choice if you want something variegated and if you want a philodendron. They are reasonably hardy. So they're a good choice. I'm just kind of in the middle about them. Right. Next one. Monstera Eskelator, previously known as Monstera Epipremnoides. It's not Epipremnoides. It turns out that is a mis-ID. We've all been doing it wrong. This is Monstera Eskelator. It's kind of like an Adansonii on steroids. It gets much bigger, many more holes, much longer than that. It's, it's really quite a nice plant. You know what it is? These plants have held their value no matter what. When I featured this plant alongside the Oblica 
in the Monster Oblique video I did, um, I think the value back then was about £200 to me. I think now I sell them for around about 220 to 250 They've really held their value. They're quite a good investment plant. I think I've actually mentioned that recently in a video as well. They're a good plant and I like them. And I have to put them higher than Adansonia because I don't really care too much about Adansonia. So I'm actually going to put them in Iconic because I do think if you like Monster with Halls in, you're sick of Delicioso, you don't want an Oblique because you think they're ugly, Try your hand at an Eskeletor. I think they're absolutely great. Plus, they can get big. They can get of size. So for me, 100%, it's iconic. All right, let's do this one. This needs no introduction. Here we have, if you can see it well, the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. This is between two categories for me. This is actually between iconic and sexually attracted. And I'm not sure which one it should go in. I feel like because it's Holy Grail, because it doesn't actually look like anything else. I did do a dupes video on this plant. So basically I did a video on if you like the look of this plant, you know, here's some plants that look similar that you could go for. There's nothing super close to it though. I do think this plant is one of a kind. It's got great history. It's very sought after. It's still very rare. It's really something to look at if you've ever been in the presence of a mature one. It's got a lot of majesty to it. So I'm going to put it in sexually attracted because honestly, it it's really one of a kind. And it is the Holy Grail Philodendron. It has always been. I think it always will be. So for me, I'm definitely sexually attracted to it. I mean, it is a long boy after all. Right, next plant. Okay, let's do this one. This is the Monstera Thai Constellation. Now, I like these plants for a lot of reasons. I think that they are as easy care as, you know, Monstera Deliciosa, if not slightly easier, because they don't burn as much, because Thai Constellation tend not to have as much sectoral variegation on them. So they're a, they're a little bit easier. The variegation is stable. Really, obviously, it's down to an individual specimen, but you don't have to worry about the plant reverting. The variegation isn't as white as a Monstera Albo. It's a little bit more on the off-white slash creamy side. But I think these are great plants. And as they are technically a large form monster underneath there, for me, they are iconic. They're also just the super easy shippers. They're, they're just great plants, honestly. They're all rounders. They're fantastic. If you want one, get one. Let's do this one. This here is the Philodendron El Choco Red. This went through a bit of a name change, I think. It became, I think it was Philodendron Luxurians Choco Red or something like that. Luxurians was in the name. Then we realized that it wasn't Luxurians, although it looks similar. So now it is just Philodendron El Choco Red. For me, this is 100% iconic. I've mentioned this before. It's a great plan. It's great easy care. Depending on the substrate, they don't ship great, they don't propagate great, but if you've been in the presence of a nice one, the leaves come in, the leaf on this picture is, I would say was reasonably new, actually, like maybe just like freshly hardened off, you get like quite a chocolatey leaf, that's obviously turning green there, and you get really bright veins, and on the back, you get a blood red underside. And it's very sexy. I'm borderline sexually attracted to this plant. I do have one at home. It's getting, it's getting there now. It's getting a little bit bigger. I think sexually attracted, given what's in the category, I feel like we're reserving it for something a little bit more than a choco, even though it is down to my opinion. So I'm going to leave it in iconic. I think that's probably where it should live, to be honest. This bad boy here, this is the Syngonium. It's the only Syngonium in here. The Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor. I picked this out because to me, it is the Syngonium with the most oomph. I feel like this is a Syngonium that nearly anyone can like, especially if you're a fan of variegated things, you're a fan of pink things, you're a fan of all that. I think they're absolutely stunning. It is on my wish list, 100%. I'm desperate for one. I'm going to put this... I don't really want to put it in iconic, I don't think. Even though... It is fantastic. I'm not sure it should be iconic because I haven't had any experience with this plant and it hasn't really proven itself to me. I might leave that where it is. I might regret that, but I think I'm going to leave that where it is. It's great plants. Nothing wrong with it. I love it. They grow easy, everything else, if it, if it follows the rules of any other Syngonium anyway. So I'm going to leave it there. I think yes, boy. Yes, boy. Next plant on the list. Oh, I'm like, I feel like I'm leaving all the controversial ones. Right, let's pull this one out. This here, this here is the Monstera Mint, or the Mint Monstera. I'm probably going to gloss over this one very quickly, but I have dished out my opinions on basically anything mint. 
ever. I've dished out my opinions on that before. And I don't actually stand by any plant that is mint. Um, I love mint. I think it's great. I love the color in real life. I, I love it. I, I like the way these plants look. That's not the problem here. The problem here is that I understand the nature, the, the chimeric nature of Monstera, or in cases with the Philadelphia Florida Ghost, people were actually selling Florida Ghost mint at one point, which essentially is just a Florida Ghost that's had less light. So... That, along with some Mint Adansonii shit that we're not going to get into, we're not going to go there today. But along with that, the whole Mint thing for me really doesn't carry well. I don't know how stable this plant is. I'm not going to sit here and profess to know. I've never owned one. I don't see many of them around. I know a lot of people say that they have Mint Monsters, but they don't. I've only ever seen maybe two or three that classify as like the real thing. I think the price tag is insane when you consider that the way that a Monstera Deliciosa, for example, is variegated, goes by layers in the leaf. So to get a full white patch on a variegated Monstera, the cells in the layers of the leaf, the three layers, they're all variegated, essentially. If you drop down a level, you get mint. So two layers of cells, say, are variegated. If you drop down again, you get like a lime green or whatever, where they're a little bit variegated. Now, cool if these plants do carry and that's that's all you'll ever get but i can't really rationalize it as anything other than you're paying for two out of three layers of variegation that you could have and these plants are never stable it's in the nature of monstera it's a documented thing i don't know if it's if it's for the drone i think that's quite harsh when i look at the other plants in there it's nearly there though guys this plant's had a similar amount of hype to the variegated tetrasperma Let's not lie. It has. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to put it in let's test shipping delays. Now, again, that's not literally meant. I probably should have named these different things. But if we do this again, you guys can come up with some categories. Or my members can come up with some categories for these things. And we'll do better categories. But I'm going to put it here. It's not Congo bad. It's not Tetrasperma bad. But I don't rate this plant. I think it is completely overhyped. I think there's just a, a weird value put on them and it, it it shouldn't really, in my opinion. So it's going to stay where it is there. Let's do the Philodendron Pink Princess. Now then, I really like this plant. I bought one famously from the International Aroid Show in 2019. Have you noticed a lot happens in 2019? I think it's mainly because 2020 just needs to be erased. But I bought this in 2019. I do still have it, by the way. Um, it's growing very strong. It was a really good specimen in terms of its genetics and its variegation. Now, I like this plant, but I, as a seller... I've had nothing but problems. I import them in. They're just shit quality. They've got like no variegation on them. And that can come back, by the way. Don't throw them out, persevere, because you will get it eventually. So I like the plant in theory. I don't love it. I think maybe it should stay where it is for now because I don't think I'm going to be harsh towards it. Like it's not on the level of these three are. So I'm going to leave it where it is. It's a nice plant. I don't like the growth pattern. I do think it needs more light than what it pretends to like. Um, so for me, it, it is work. I'm not a lover of pink, by the way. Pink's actually my most hated colour. Let's do the Anthurium. Well, the Queen Anthurium. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, that, for me, has to be here. There, literally, there's no real argument. I think the Queen Anthurium, it's a Queen Anthurium. This is the first, or one of the first plans to make me cry when I got it. Some of you may remember that back in the day, I unboxed a Queen Anthurium and it's when you just, you they weren't heard of. Like people knew about them, but you could not, you could not get them. Um, it's way before the rare plant boom kicked off and that's before the COVID boom. I mean the boom before that, when rare, rare plants came in. Um, and I, I couldn't believe it. It was like the number one thing that I wanted. Um, and I couldn't actually believe I got it in the box. For me, it's iconic. It's borderline. It's so borderline between iconic and sexually attracted. But I'm going to preserve just the sanctity of this category here. But it, it's, it's really in between the two. If there was an intermediate category, it would be, it would be in there because it's, a, it's just a beautiful plant. I own a few of these. Obviously, I have some in the shop, but I have two in my studio. Um, you can see them on my Instagram because they're, they're quite different. One's very different to the other one, but it's got to be there. It's iconic. It's iconic. 100%. Okay. This plant here is what's known as Philodendron Pareso Verde. It grows leaves 
kind of like a philodendron bill tie. They're basically arrow shaped, but they're not super thin. They're a little bit fatter and the leaves are very ruffled and very kind of flimsy. The petioles are very long. It's not the sexiest plant in the world, guys. I've said this before. I don't get the hype. I don't. Now, do I have a lot of these? Yes, I do. And they won't stop growing. I think you guys might have seen that in a few shops videos. They are great growers. If you want a plant to grow and propagate and sell on and you want something bigger and you want like a mottled variegation because that's kind of what this is, then cool. Go for it. Awesome. Um, for me, it's gone here. I've worked with enough of them to know whether I'd like them or not. You know, I would have liked them by now. I've seen hundreds of them. I have hundreds of them. Nah, it's, it's going here. I feel bad <laughs> putting it next to this monster here, but I'm going to leave it there because it's, there's no way it could go any higher than that, really. It's not going to happen. Ah, uh, no, no. Okay, I should have ended on a high note and I fucked that up because uh, this here is the philodendron Gabby. Uh, right, someone needs to explain to me why this is a thing. I knew this was going to be on the list today. Obviously, I made this list. And I had to look up prices on the internet to see basically how much this was going for. Because I thought, oh, this is massively inflated. This is going to be like a hundred pounds or something like that. It's, it's worse. Um, it's way worse. It's several times that for one of these plants. So my understanding, and I might be wrong, so just give me a free pass here. My understanding is this is basically a philodendron Brazil that's kind of morphed a bit and it's more variegated. So it's kind of like a cream splash, but like a super variegated cream splash, right? Someone needs to explain to me why it is worth that much. Because I have in my shop a lot of philodendron cream splash, right? I've got two personal plants that I've made out of loads of cuttings. And then I have, I, I don't even know how many cuttings of cream splash that are about maybe that long. Some of them are probably about that long now. They've probably grown more. Let me tell you something. I have at least, at least 10 to 12 plants that look so much like what people put on the internet to represent a Gabby. So basically all the Gabbies I've seen on the internet. I have so many that seem to resemble more or less that, that I can't understand the reasoning for the price. Like, I think cream splashes are, I think to, to get a decent cutting, you're under treble digits, maybe high doubles, something like that. I think I sold them for about 60, 65 pounds or something like that. I have a lot of cuttings and I'm not kidding. I have a lot of cuttings that look like this plant here. Are they the exact shape? No, maybe that's, maybe that's why. You know, I'm not professing to know why that is what it is. But overall, when you consider the fact you could get a really good variegated cream splash, bearing most of the same hallmarks for more, less than a quarter of the price, less than a quarter of the price. What, what makes this so special? And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to just, I'm not trying to shit on anybody selling it or anything like that. I don't want any tea. It's not like that. I just don't understand why that's a thing when there are other things similar you know? Oh God, I don't know if I want to be that harsh. It's between these two categories. I'll tell you straight up. It's between let's, let's test shipping delays and for the drone. I think given what is in the for the drone category, I'm going to pop it there. I think that is fair for me. I do not understand the hype. Maybe there's something about this plant that I inherently just don't get or don't know about. And that's cool. That's fine. Um, again, I'm not trying to bash anybody. I've just, I've literally never understood this. I have seen the internet go literally wild for this shit. And I don't know if it's a hype thing or what. I mean, I, d I just don't get it when cream splash is so similar. Um, I mean, I don't actually get the whole cream splash reel, all of the other things as well anyway. I don't get it. Yeah, they're all pretty, but they're all, surely they're all just sports of. They're all just very similar. And I know from personally owning a lot of cream splash, like a statistically significant amount of cream splash, they can vary so much anyway, and they can revert back to like a Brazil or, or something like that and then come back again. They're very chaotic. Make it make sense, guys. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's going to stay in here. Whew. 
We made it through that, hopefully, without offending too many people. So that was essentially me rating a shit ton of rare plants. Now, I'm more than happy to do another one of these videos. Um, if you want me to do that, please leave a comment down below and maybe even a list of plants that you would like me to rank. I'm more than happy to do this for common plants. There is nothing off limits. I can do it for, say, a different genus of plant. Like, I can do it for just Anthurium, a bit like a reverse rare plant index, right? I can do it for all kinds of things. So if you like this video, if you like the format of it, if you thought it was fun to just chat some shit about some house plants, then please let me know down below. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video. Again, let me know what you think down below. And until then, I guess I will see you next week. Bye.